combination of earnings growth uh, at an EBIT line and then also looking at what they do with their free cash flow. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you right now. We have a uh, what appears to be a very serious... Is that the World Trade Tower? Yeah. Yeah. This is... Mark, a plane hit it? They think so. You know, after the first plane hit, you know, looking out the window by page one, you know, I mean, realizing that, that something horrible was going on, I couldn't even tell at first that a plane had hit. Then after the second plane hit, there was no question that we would have to evacuate the building and we would have to make the paper in South Brunswick. So many of our people and Paul himself were in the center of it. They were right there, eyewitnesses to it. Paul himself put himself in harm's way for the good of the newspaper. Everyone was being told to get out, and Paul stayed to get these people to make sure that this paper could come out. I mean, he was not just a witness to this history, but he was in the center of it. Paul made a series of crucial decisions very early on, and literally with, you know, the buildings collapsing around him. One was to get as many people as he could of the crucial editors across the river, and literally was able to get them across the river, in some cases on the last boat out. But I was so focused on, you know, trying to get my head around the story and what was happening and getting in contact with the reporters and the editors and how we were going to play it. The thought that it wasn't going to come out just never occurred to me. I think there was never any question in the minds of any of the reporters or editors of the paper that this is what we do for a living, this is what we're supposed to do. By the time we got ourselves together here, there was an opportunity to disengage from the personal experiences we had and get ourselves in the mode of making decisions about what the newspaper should do. I've been asked a number of times, well, were people making decisions with all the images still in their mind, those people who'd really seen them, and you guys were very cool. This was a coping mechanism. That, you know, the world, something horrible had happened. We didn't know what was going to happen tomorrow. But what we did know was how to put out a newspaper. I mean, that was, for me, a way of dealing with just the mayhem and uncertainty of Very that true. day. I think I look at my colleagues a little differently, and I know them a little better because I saw them under circumstances that I never imagined seeing them or anybody. And, um, and I think that, that actually helps the paper in the long run. We sort of had a collection of early 21st century technology, and we're trying to work on cell phones and pagers and Blackberries. And sometimes the cell phones worked and sometimes they didn't. The computer right. stayed yeah. connected, yeah, computer and that right. was so crucial. We wouldn't have been able to handle the template for page one without the uh, computer. We wouldn't have been able to see the story. This was a global story, and it's become, with the war, even more global. And so the interaction between our folks abroad and people here and trying to track terrorism, I think, has really pushed our globalization and, and all of us being more conscious of the global perspective. When I talked to them in South Brunswick, they said they couldn't do a banner headline because they didn't have a template for it. I was determined that if you weren't going to put a better headline on the paper on that day, when were you going to do it? One reason there was no debate about the headline is that we were right there. And our reporters were there, which is one of the ways we were able to get such tremendous eyewitness accounts. That day we were really the Pearl Harbor Journal. The sense of collaboration was enormous and the sense of connection to our predecessors was there in the background as well. Paul is constantly making judgments and decisions that set the stage for good collaboration. So, it, you know, hundreds of things are going on that we're not even aware of. And then when the rubber meets the road and the copy starts flowing and we start doing our job, his leadership has, you know, set this stage so beautifully that we can uh, be extremely effective and collaborative. He set a tone with just being very calm, very deliberate, uh, certainly from the time we all gathered here and on through the evening as we struggled with stuff. You can't become a great leader in one day. You can't say, okay, on September 11th, you know, Paul led us through this. Yes, he did, but as everybody else has said, the pieces have to be in place. And over time, he's really just created a truly outstanding staff. No single person could have orchestrated all the aspects of the response to September 11th, the journalistic response, under the conditions Paul had to deal with. But everyone knew that Paul was there, calm, collected, thoughtful, wise, 
leading the effort, and that gave everyone else the confidence to do their jobs as well as they did. We produced a paper that still, to this day, every story on that front page stands up, even though every story on that front page and inside the paper was produced under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. The entire period since uh, September 11th has been a period of um, our folks coming together and uh, performing under continuing difficult conditions as well as, indeed in many cases, better than at any time I can remember um, in the modern history of the paper. These folks, any one of them, could run the Wall Street Journal or any other publication by themselves. When you get them together in a room, the sheer brilliance and, and competency amazes me day after day after day. In the aftermath of the bombing, there was the war, and in the middle of the war, there was Enron, and we get excitement and satisfaction, and in the end, dare I say, joy at being able to respond to these events and, and help people understand them. Paul, like a number of others, stepped up to that and provided the leadership and the kind of calm leadership that was required. And he did it. It was great. And it doesn't surprise me because he's done it for years and years and years, uh, perhaps in slightly less dramatic situations, but he does it all the time.